Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my briefing video that is entitled uh, Please Remember One New Requirement for Test Data Loading Scripts. So, um, in our final project activity uh, that's due in week 12, of our course here in the summer of uh, 2018 at the University of Illinois. Um, I have a coding assignment due. It's called Final Project. It has uh, instructions, annotated instructions, a tutorial video for the final project workflow. And that would be fine if the tutorial video for the final project workflow were completely accurate given the state of uh, the behavior of the MySQL server uh, project uh, uh, product, I guess. Well, uh, one requirement has changed. Uh, one of the uh, one of the settings that we get automatically when we install. MySQL Server uh, has been switched in the interest of greater security. And the way that we load our test uh, data files will work. I still think it's the best way for us to do it, but we have to we have to we have to change one setting before it will work. Okay, so if you've already um, played the project workflow tutorial video and you've tried to make uh, your script work um, just based on the things you saw in the video, it's probably failing because it says that, uh, oh, it's something akin to we can't try to load uh, data um, from a local uh, file that's on the client. Okay, so we just have to change a setting. Now, what does that look like? Well, right here, um, you're going to see that there's a line. I'm just going to highlight it. It's the first one that I have added in the sample file that, that I hand out. Set global so that sets a global variable for the server and the global variable is called local in file so it's can we use a local in file which is the method that we've been using set it to equal to on okay well i guess it used to always be equal to on uh and uh now when we install the product it's equal to off might be a little bit more complex than that, but you can certainly think of it that way, okay? So um, it turns out if you have this extra line added at the top of your script and everything else about your script is okay, it'll run just fine. But if you don't, it's going to blow up, okay? So let me just uh, demonstrate um, this using the my guitar shop uh, database okay so i'm going to uh first of all i'm going to go over and manually drop uh the schema the whole database for my guitar shop okay so that's gone okay and then i i uh i have my script that came with the uh um, well, I gave it for you to download uh, earlier in the course, but this is a script that uh, creates the pristine version of the My Guitar Shop uh, database uh, with all the data populated, right? So I'm going to run that. And that looks like that ran okay. Okay. And how can I usually find out if that ran okay? Well, I refresh over here on the left and I see that I do have a my guitar shop schema so I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna use this schema inspector 
and uh, then click on tables and I'm going to look at the number of rows okay uh, 12 3 4 8 12 9 10 and I just have in the past I have uh, created a copy of what the what the numbers are that we're looking for and you can see uh, 12 3 4 8 12 9 10 okay that looks like it worked all right uh, good okay now what's the next thing that I do well first of all I'm going to close uh, some of these so I have some room uh, I have all the data in the table uh, in the tables now well I don't want that there right um, and so um, as I say in the tutorial uh, video you can create a truncate script uh, that will uh, just essentially empty out all the data from the table. So this is for the My Guitar Shop uh, database and I run it and it looks like that ran okay. And let's just uh, take a look again and see if the data is in uh, in the tables anymore. So I went to the schema inspector and now I'm looking at the tables and I've got old values. If I refresh, and this is a problem in the current version of, uh, well, I'm not sure uh, what, either the server or workbench, um, the values for the row counts get sticky. Okay, so I can refresh all day and that doesn't seem to be working. Perhaps it, it, if I closed Workbench and opened it again, I would get the right answers. But what I usually do now is I go uh, and I look at a table, uh, something like orders, where I think I'm expecting to have nine. And let's just see what's there. And you can see that it's empty. Okay, so that schema inspector row count is even stickier than it used to be. Um, I've got some confidence that if you shut everything down and start it up again, you'll get accurate answers, but uh, that's a small uh, consolation. So if you really want to check the counts, uh, again, you can just open the table. So I'll, I'll go to uh, Customers and go over to the grid icon, and you can see that's empty too. Okay, so that's fine. That's what I want. So I have a script uh, here. It's really based upon, this is actually the script that I have uh, published um, under the final project. Okay, it's called, uh, it's under uh, a title called uh, Revised Sample Test Data Loading Script. And you can see that it's like the one I went through in the other tutorial, but uh, it has this uh, set global local in file equals on at the, at, at the beginning. So first of all, I just want to show you what goes wrong when I don't have it. Okay, so I'm going to toggle this into a comment. At least I thought I was doing that. Okay, so that's a comment now. That's not going to run. And I'm going to uh, clear the results down at the bottom. And if I run up here, um, it used to be before the most recent change in the um, default settings for uh, MySQL Server in version 8. It used to be this would run just fine. The trouble was uh, making sure that you got the proper path expression to point to your data. Okay, that, that, that was the hard part. Okay, well now if we go to run this, uh, it's going to bomb out. Uh, and it says uh, error code 1148, the use command is not allowed. And if we, if we look at the rest of what it has to say, uh, it says with this MySQL version, and I think it says, uh, I think if you read the rest of, of the message, it says that has to do with a security uh, 
uh, feature. Okay, well, how do we defeat that security feature? Because we, uh, you know, we know that we're good guys and we should be able to load data that is local to our client where we're running Workbench. Well, we just uncomment that line up at the top so that it's really an active line. Okay, and I'm going to clear this. And I should just be able to run it now, and everything should run fine. So I'm going to run it, and look at it. Everything ran fine. I don't have any warnings. The things that you're looking for here is you're looking for errors, and you're also looking for warnings. Uh, warnings, uh, which is the yellow icon over here instead of the green check mark. Warnings usually tell you that... Um, uh, when it went to load the data, it wasn't able to hook up all of your relationships with the foreign keys. Okay, so this should be just fine. So let's see, let's come over here. Let's see if this schema inspector is going to behave. Although I think it was uh, stuck on the proper answer, so that's probably not a good uh, test. But let's go down, for instance, and let's open up orders where we're expecting, um, sorry, we're expecting nine. And, um, and we can see, sorry, we can see that we've got nine. Okay. And let's just look at uh, customers where we're expecting, I think, eight. And can, we can see that we have eight. Okay. And we can look at addresses where we're expecting, uh, I think, 12. And we can see that we've got 12. Uh, okay. So the only thing that has uh, changed is this one little... Uh, this one setting that I put at the top that uh, sort of undoes the configuration change that happened when we went to version 8. Now, if you're not using the most recent version of the server, um, you, you probably don't have to do this. On the other hand, uh, I don't think this will hurt even if you're not y using the most recent version of the server. Um, but uh, if you are using the most recent version of the server and you don't make the change that I'm showing you here, uh, you're never going to get your your test uh, data loaded um, using the scheme that I'm showing you to use. And always remember to set foreign key checks equal to one because that is what makes sure that it builds the relationships. Okay, so we not only need uh, data in the tables, but we want to make sure that the foreign keys are all properly populated um, and that they meet the foreign key uh, constraints uh, for the schema such that we have a proper uh, database. And uh, the way to make sure that happens is uh, to set that. Okay, that's it. Um, I apologize for the instructions being kind of a, a, a piece meal, but this is kind of what happens um, when the configuration of the product uh, changes as rapidly as it does. At least that's the excuse that I'm going to use. So good luck with everything, and uh, uh, please Know that if you're stuck on this or anything else, uh, that you can send me a ticket on the request uh, portal for the class, and I ought to be able to get together with you either uh, in writing or online, and uh, ought to be able to help you get unstuck. So good luck with all of it, and I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.